Welcome back, everybody, for another deep dive. And oh boy, this one's uh, this one's a good one. You guys sent a question, and it, it really sparked a huge debate online. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump into that today. So this one all started with uh, with this sentence: the doctrine of eminent domain is based on the legal tradition that all real property is subject to the control of the state. And so, you know, on on the surface, it seems pretty straightforward. But uh, one of our listeners, Ben Pinter. Uh, dove into a discussion with ChatGPT about this and specifically that that clause right there. You know, is it a noun clause or an adjective clause? And, <laughs> and it got really interesting really fast. Yeah, it, it really did. You know, to, to get to the heart of this debate, though, I, I think we need to kind of break down a couple of key grammar concepts. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. So first up, adjective clauses and noun clauses. And I know everybody listening probably knows what these are, but just as a reminder, an adjective clause, as the name suggests, it acts like an adjective. It modifies a noun or pronoun, providing additional information. Think of it like a little detective, you know, adding clues to, to, to a case. And then on the other hand, we have noun clauses. And, and these function as nouns. They can be the subject of a sentence, the object of a verb, or even the object of a preposition. Okay, so, so how do we figure out then what is our that clause doing in the sentence? Well, let's start with the usual suspect. The adjective clause ChatGPT initially went this route, analyzing as basic as the main verb, and then on the legal tradition as, as a prepositional phrase, modifying that verb. So since the, that clause seems to add information about the legal tradition, it would make sense to consider it an adjective clause at first glance. Right. Okay. So that makes sense. But, but Ben Pinter wasn't convinced, right? They argued that the clause doesn't just describe the legal tradition. It actually clarifies its meaning. Yeah. Like it's almost like it's saying, you know, this is what that legal tradition is. Right. And that brings us to our second important concept for today. The object complement. Dun, dun, dun. Right. So an object complement, in, in simple terms, completes the meaning of a direct object. And it can be a noun, an adjective, or even a phrase that renames or describes the direct object. Think of it like the final piece of a puzzle making the picture complete. So now, if the legal tradition is the object of the verb, then th that clause could potentially be acting as its complement. Hmm. Okay, so we have two possible interpretations here. How do we determine which one is correct? Well, that is the question, isn't it? It is. And and this is where things took an unexpected turn because Ben Pinter, like a true grammar sleuth, consulted the Cambridge Dictionary and, and discovered something really fascinating about this phrase, base on. Oh, yeah. What's that? Well, they found that base on is actually listed as a phrasal verb. And this seemingly small detail changes the whole game. Well, hold on. Why why does that matter? What What's so special about a phrasal verb? Okay. So a phrasal verb is a combination of a verb and a preposition or adverb that functions as a single unit, often with a meaning different from the individual words. So in this case, if base on is a phrasal verb, the legal tradition is no longer part of a prepositional phrase. Instead, it becomes the direct object of the phrasal verb base on. Oh, so by, by identifying base on as a phrasal verb, we've shifted the legal tradition into the spotlight, making it the direct object. Exactly. And, and if it's a direct object. We can have an object complement. This completely reframes our analysis of the sentence. I, I love it when this happens. So before we reveal what ChatGPT had to say, let's take a moment to just recap what we've learned. We've explored the differences between adjective clauses and noun clauses, uncovered the role of object complements, and encountered the power of phrasal verbs to transform sentence structure. And we've seen how carefully analyzing the function of each word and phrase can lead to a deeper understanding of even seemingly simple sentences. So now are you ready to hear how ChatGPT responded to, to this phrasal verb revelation? Oh, I am. I am. Let's, uh, let's get into it. All right, let's go. Okay, so so ChatGPT has been presented with this new information that based on is a phrasal verb. What happened next? Well, ChatGPT, always willing to learn, acknowledged that with base on being a phrasal verb, the legal tradition does indeed become its direct object. And and remember that opens up the possibility of the that clause functioning as an object complement. Okay, so so ChatGPT is starting to come around to Ben Pinter's way of thinking. Did it stop there? Not at all. Then went on to highlight how the that clause that all real property is subject to the control of the state really does complete the meaning of the legal tradition. It's not just adding extra information. It's defining what that legal tradition is. Okay, I, I see that. But couldn't you still argue that it's an adjective clause? I mean, it, it is describing the yeah. legal tradition, right? Yeah, right. You're right. It is describing the legal tradition, and, and that's where it gets tricky. To illustrate the difference actually provided an alternative phrasing. They suggested that if the clause were functioning as an adjective clause, the sentence would flow better as... The legal tradition, which states that all real property is subject to the control of the state, 
forms the basis of eminent domain. Ah, so, so adding which states that clarifies the role of the clause, making it a much more obvious adjective clause. Exactly. But in the original sentence, the that clause isn't just modifying the legal tradition, it's defining it, which points us back to the idea of an object complement. Okay, so so after all that back and forth, did ChatGPT finally agree with Ben Pinter? Yes, they did. ChatGPT admitted that Ben Pinter's analysis was spot on, concluding that that all real property is subject to the control of the state is indeed a noun clause functioning as an object complement. Awesome. Ben Pinter really dug deep to get to the bottom of this grammatical puzzle. 